Yeah, very good morning to all of you. I said Dr. Pradipya, Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering at Jokumar Engineering College. My today topic is introduction of additive manufacturing. What is additive manufacturing? As you know, today we have heard about this 3D printing. Basically, additive manufacturing is the process by which a product, a part can be manufactured using addition of material layer by layer. That's what is called additive manufacturing. But previously, it is known as the rapid prototyping because this technology is developed for the prototyping purpose. In the rapid prototype, but nowadays we can use this technology for final part creation as well as functional part. Not only for prototyping part, we can develop functional part as well as the additive manufacturing. The other name of this additive manufacturing like desktop manufacturing, layered manufacturing, 3D printing. As we know, this is this technology is a layer by layer manufacturing of physical part directly from 3D CAD mode. It is an automated process of fabricate prototypes, parts, tools and assembly. Not only prototypes, and previously this technology used for the prototype purpose, but nowadays this technology is used for directly manufacture the final parts, not only parts, but complete assembly we can manufacture using this additive manufacturing technique. Without any cutters, tools or fixture, there is no need of any machine setup, any cutter, any tools in this additive. This is completely automated process. In this automated process, we have to simply design a part using any CAD software. And after designing that part, we can process some operation on that part file to manufacture the final part. So this is completely automated process. There is no manual intervention. This is completely automated process. A uh, general uh, generic uh, method of additive manufacturing, as we know, we need a CAD file, a computer design file, or solid model, a digital model, or a scanning model. So we can use this CAD file. Uh, we can create this CAD file using uh, any 3D software, uh, CAD software like AutoCAD, uh, Pro Engineer, SolidWorks, CATIA. There are NX. There are a lot of software available. AutoCAD Fusion 360. There are a lot of software available to creating the 3D models. Not only we need to create the solid model uh, from the 3D CAD software, we can also use a scanning image or Gita image to convert into this 3D model. Once we create or once we got the 3D model, we have to manipulate, we have to generate the appropriate file. file. So first we have to convert this CAD model into a specific format that is called the STL format, STL lithography. Uh, triangulation is required, so we have to generate a STL file from this CAD model. This is the second step. After generating the STL format, we have to manipulate this STL file. We have to repair the STL file there if there is some errors. Okay. After the manipulation is over, uh, suppose we have to STL file, we have to combine it and we have to modify, we have to optimize that STL file, we can do that. So after uh, manipulation of this STL file, we have to generate a support structure okay. and support structure and we have to select, we have to create a material build of orientation as well. Once the support, the support structure is created, um, build orientation is finalized, we have to slice, as we know this is a very important parameter, a slicing of a STL file in different layer because as we know, this additive manufacturing is a process of creating part, final part, layer by layer. So we have to convert our model into different layers. So layer thickness uh, is very depending on the machine, depending on the printer we are going to use. It may be uh, 0.1 mm, maybe 0.2 mm, maybe 0.3 mm. So we have to stylize this part into number of layers on the basis of layer thickness. Once the layer, uh, the part is slicing different layers, then we have to print it, we have to manufacture this final part, we have to upload this STL file, final slicing file. Uh, after the slicing, we have to generate the G code for manufacturing. The system is automatically generated the G code for manufacturing, for actual part production. 
then this G code can be used by the 3D printer to create the final physical object. When the final physical object created layer by layer, we have to remove the part and as we already discussed, uh, the support structure is also created for this part if necessary. Then we have to remove the support structure from the original part. After removing the support structure, we have to post finish it for the post processing operation. Uh, this is as we already discussed about this uh, complete cycle of this additive manufacturing. There are different types of processes uh, available. Uh, the first we have to a physical part is made directly from 3D CAD model without any special tooling. In AM process, the 3D CAD data slides into thin cross section plans here. We have already discussed it. The first layer geometry is defined by the shape of the first cross section plan. It is bonded to a base, and additional layer are bonded on the top of the previous layer according to their respective cross section plans. So this process is repeated until the final part is complete. This is the complete additive manufacturing process. We can discuss here the additive manufacturing process you know, uh, from the CAD model to complete finally 3D object. As uh, we already discussed, uh, we have to first create the 3D CAD model. We, we can see, see here, there is a 3D CAD model, the left side. Then there is a STL file. The conversion of this 3CAD model into STL file. This is just a triangulation of the surfaces of this 3D CAD model. Then we have to slice it using any slicing software. Okay. Then tool path generation for final manufacturing. Then this tool path generation file, generate file is uploaded into 3D printer to print the final 3D object. This is a process flow from the CAD model to 3D object. Uh, now, till now, there are uh, different types of technology used for, uh, available for this uh, additive manufacturing. The seven prominent technology is now, now available uh, in the market and widely used bed photopolymerization, SL, material extrusion, FDA, material jetting process, binder jetting process, water wet fusion, SNS, sheet lamination. This is the known as loam, laminated object manufacturing and direct energy deposition is also called the DED. So these seven prominent technologies nowadays available for this additive manufacturing purpose. Now we will discuss these uh, seven technologies in brief to understand the complete additive manufacturing process. The first is the stereolithography apparatus, SLA. This is the first technique which was developed around 1982. This is the first technique basically used to generate the prototypes. So this bed photopolymerization uses a weight of liquid photopolymerizer out of which the model is constructed layer by layer. An ultraviolet light is used to cure or harden the resin. We are required by a platform move the object being made downwards. After each new layer is cured as shown in figure as the process would liquid to form object. Now this is the block diagram of this SLA operator. You can see here there is a computer system. And uh, this computer system controls the laser guided ultraviolet, ultraviolet beam. Okay. There is a mirror system, you can see here. Uh, in the figure, there is a liquid photopolymer tank which is filled with the liquid photopolymer, photopolymer resin. There is an elevator platform, you can see, and there is a base to support the base to support the structure. And finally, in green color, we can see the final model is created using this. SLA technique. What happened this technique? As you can see here, a laser beam is used to cure the cross section of the photopolymer because this uh, photopolymer is basically uh, light sensitive region. When the this uh, ultraviolet beam uh, impart on that section, the section is automatically solidified. So once the one layer cross section is solidified, we have to downward this liquid elevator by one layer thickness and the fresh liquid imparted on the previous layer and again this laser ultraviolet laser beam used to cure the remaining material for remaining cross section. Then layer by layer we can see we can cure the each cross section according to the layer thickness and layer cross section we can build the final part. So this is the complete SLA process. This SLA process is generally used to develop the intricate parts the various applications of this SLA nowadays, like in jewelry manufacturing, the prototype of different jewelry manufacturing. 
and even in you can use this in repetitive bioprinting as well. So there are different uh, applications for this assembly because we know this is the first technology we developed for the additive manufacturing. Still, this technology is also prevalent for the different purposes. The next technology we can discuss here this fuel deposition modeling. It is also known as the FDM. The fuel deposition modeling is a common material extrusion process and is trademarked by the Mr. Hussain. In this technology, material is drawn through a nozzle where it is heated and it is deposited layer by layer. The nozzle can move horizontally and a platform move up and down vertically. After each new layer is deposited, it is commonly used technique used for the many inexpensive domestic and hobby 3D printer. This is the most prominent technology nowadays used and the different sizes of 3D printers available using. Here we can see a simple uh, FDM extrusion head. In this FDM extrusion head, you can see a material flyman. That is generally a material used in the form of flyman. A flyman generally available in the market is uh, 1.75 mm dia or 3 mm dia, depending on the this machine or this 3D printed technology ability to use. And there is a drive wheel where this material is fed through the extruder nozzle. The drive wheel is used to extrude the material, to feed the material through the nozzle. There is a nozzle tool or nozzle. Nozzle tip basically, depending on the applications of uh, intricacy of the final part. The nozzle tip uh, may vary in diameter, it may be 0.2 mm diameter, it may be 0.3 mm diameter, it up to can be used to 1 mm diameter as well or 0.1 mm diameter, which is depending on the intricacy and accuracy of the material used. So, this process basically the buyer is fed in the flyman form uh, to this nozzle and there is a heating chamber. This buyer is heated up to a certain temperature for different material, the heating temperature is set to a different for Generally, for PLA material, the heating temperature is 180 degrees to 220 degrees centigrade. But ABS is so hard, the, for the ABS, the temperature is above 200 degrees centigrade at 220 to 250 degrees centigrade. And for that, different types of flexible material uh, can also be uh, manufactured using this high temperature range. But depending on the material, the temperature range is set. In this FDM technology, we need a heated bed or heated platform as well uh, to uh, to avoid uh, to avoid the distortion of the build uh, object or completely sticking the first layer on the build platform, we need a heated bed. Generally, the temperature of heated bed we have to cap uh, around 50 to 60 or 65 degrees centigrade for the bonding perfect as well. So, this FDM is most prominent technology, or even uh, to manufacture the final functional part, this technology also used. We can create uh, any customized part using this technology and nowadays the different vendors uh, using the 3D manufacture part using this FDM technology as a final functional customized part. The next technology known as the material jetting process. A material jetting creates object in similar method to a simply two diameter inkjet printer. We already uh, use this inkjet printer, we know the mechanism of this inkjet printer. But the only difference is that the inkjet printer work in the two dimension only. We can print on a paper by a ink. Similarly, in this 3D uh, printer, the material jetting process, we, we can also use a material, 3D material as a uh, ink and deposit it on the platform. But only difference is that the platform can be moved in downward direction to print the another layer on the previous layer. And, uh, as we know, to solidify that uh, layers, we need a ultraviolet light or UV light. Okay. So, material is jetted onto the build platform where it is solidified and the model is built layer by layer. Material is deposited from a nozzle which moves horizontally across the build platform like the 2D printer as we know. Machines vary in complexity and their methods of controlling the deposition of the material. The material layers are then cured or hardened using the ultraviolet. UV lights. Here we can see this material jetting process. At the right side, there is a two build material and support material. There is a material spool. At one, we can have to supply the build material, another is for the support material. 
the support material can be easily removed from the final parts. And there are two colors, violet and pink color is used. Okay, violet color is used for the build material, pink color is used for the support material. Okay. As we can see here, the two nozzles used to deposit the material on the platform and ultraviolet curing lamp is there to cure or to solidify this deposited layer. Once the one layer is deposited and cured, the platform is clamped down by this layer thickness. Once the first layer is completed, then this platform is clamped down by one layer thickness and another layer is deposited, the material executed material is deposited by this widget head and again this is cured by the UV curing lamp. The second layer is completed, again the platform is down by the one layer thickness. In the similar fashion, in the similar way, the complete part can be manufactured layer by layer. So this is the material getting process. Another technique is the use of binder jetting. In the case of material jetting, we have to feed the material through the nozzle to deposit on the platform. But in case of binder jetting, no need to feed the material itself. Only the binder is used to deposit it on the already spread powder material or 3D printed material on the bed. So a binder jetting process uses two materials a powder base material and a binder. The binder acts as an adhesive between powder layers. The binder is usually in liquid form and the build material is powder form. A print head moves horizontally along the axon by axis of the machine deposit and deposit alternating layer of the material, build material and the binding material. After each layer, the object being printed is lowered on its left. The Similar, all the techniques is basically same in this layer by layer by layer manufacturing. The uh, build platform is come down by one layer thickness. As you can see, here, this is a block diagram for this binder jet technology. You can see a liquid binder is spread through the inkjet print head, and there is a platform powder bed is there. And in green color, we can see here the complete part can be manufactured using this binder jetting and new powder stock is also available to spread on the build platform. Once the first layer is manufactured, first layer is completed, then this build platform came down by the one layer thickness. This layer thickness in each and every technology, we have to develop a part layer by layer. That's why it is also called the layer manufacturing, additive manufacturing because there is additional material as compared to the conventional manufacturing process, we have to subtract the material as we can using the any milling machine or lathe machine. We have to use remove the material from the raw material to produce the final part. But in this case, we have to add the material layer by layer. That's why it is called additive manufacturing as compared to the conventional manufacturing, which is the subtractive manufacturing process. The next technology is most prominent technology, laser. Uh, selective laser centering or selective laser melting. Uh, a high laser beam, high laser, high power laser is used basically to selectively center or melt the metal powders to produce the metal parts. The technique used for this is called the powder bed fusion. The powder bed fusion process includes the following commonly used printing technique, direct metal laser centering, electron beam melting, selective heat centering, selective laser melting SLM, and selective laser centering SLM is the most prominent technology. The powder bed fusion PBF method use a laser beam to melt and fuse material powder together. That's why it is called the powder bed fusion process. This is a SLA type, SLS type printer. We can see here a CO2 laser is used to centered or melt the material spread on the build platform. There is a laser optics to scanning this laser beam, CO2 laser beam. And there is a labeling roller is used to bond after each layer manufacturing. Then powder bed is spread on the build platform. Powder bed chamber is there and powder cartridge to cartridge to use the uh, spread the material after each layer manufacturing. 
another popular technology known as the laminated object manufacturing a laminated object manufacturing uses a similar layer by layer approach and use paper as material and adhesive the loam process uses a cross hatching method during the printing process to allow for easy removal post build laminated object manufacturing generally used for the aesthetic and visual model it cannot be used for generally for the structural purpose because the material is generally the material used for this purpose is paper that's why it is used for the visual person or aesthetic purpose not not for the structural support or final functional part this is the block diagram you can see here there is a build platform pick up roll is there uh, supply roll is there so once the roll of this paper is supplied and to cut the paper on the desired uh, cross section we have to use a laser cutter basically so this laser cutter beam cuts the cross section according to the whatever the model is given to us to manufacture the first layer cross section is cut by the laser beam and the heated roller is used to uh, bonded this layer to the another layer so layer by layer the each cross section is cutting cutted by this laser beam and after manufacturing of each layer the final part can be manufactured using this laminator of the manufacturing technology technology is on the r&d phase and this is very useful because the metal components produced by this powder bed fusion technology is very costly because it needs a sophisticated technology sophisticated lasers high power lasers and uh, uh, environment which is very costly to overcome this problem a direct energy deposition technique can be used how it by the working of this technology is very simple as we can see there is electron beam or laser beam or any high intensity beam can be used to there is a metal wire to heating this metal wire to melt this metal wire once the metal wire is uh, heated melt by this electron beam or laser beam deposited in liquid form on the build platform when the first layer is deposited and the platform is came down by layer thickness another layer is also deposited on this so this technology is very useful and less costlier than the other PBF te PBF technology is available. So this direct energy deposition technology is very useful nowadays, and research is going on uh, to improve the accuracy, improve the part accuracy uh, of this DED, direct energy deposition. Technology. As you can see, uh, what is the use of these technologies? Uh, there are uh, nowadays wide application of this 3D printing. 3D printing in previous years. If we talk about in uh, initial years of uh, this century, uh, the rapid prototyping, uh, also known as additive manufacturing nowadays, this is this technology known as the rapid prototyping, and the part uh, produced by this uh, additive manufacturing technology used for the prototyping purpose only. Because uh, at that time, uh, the technique is not so improved. The part produced by this technology is not so uh, not so finished. And the standard is not so much high that can be used as the final uh, functional part. But after development in the different uh, modern technology of this additive manufacturing, nowadays a final not only this prototyping but the final functional part can be produced. And different companies nowadays using uh, different customized part using this additive manufacturing technology. As we know, if you want to develop some prototypes or some machines, or you need to build, require some functional parts. So there is no need to produce that part using by conventional technology. This conventional technology basically use the uh, this computer basically use the machine setup. The time is uh, very long as well as uh, it it cost here. But by using this additive manufacturing technology. We can produce uh, these parts uh, within less time and by less cost. So not only for uh, prototyping purpose, this technology nowadays used for the final functional part as well. Thank you very much.